Why don't we get into some baseball conversation? And the New York Mets, who have been playing unbelievable baseball this year. We expected this. Uncle Stevie spent a lot of money in the offseason. He put this team on a pedestal and said, I am going to go out there and I'm going to do everything I can to make this team a championship competitive team. Going after Sterling Marte, bringing in Escobar, who's a great defensive player and can hit for good average. Bringing in Max Scherzer, who arguably is one of the best pitchers in baseball. Canna, he's been unbelievable, hitting over 330. But what we see with the Mets that we didn't see last year is team unity. This team is not just playing for one or the other. They're playing together. If you want to be a championship competitive team and you want to see growth, you need a team to play together. Pete Alonso, over the last couple of years, has been the leader. Now you're seeing Francisco Lindor. Now you're seeing Max Scherzer, who a lot of people believe is the team leader in that clubhouse. It is very, very important when you watch these players build together and turn this into a real destination to go and play for. Buck Showalter, if you were to tell me who would be manager of the year in the National League, right now it would be Buck. Now, Buck has done this everywhere he's gone. Arizona, Texas, the Yankees, Baltimore. Everywhere he's gone, he's turned franchises around, but never won. Going into this season, a lot of people loved Buck. Everybody thought that this guy was the perfect man for the job. He's got a tremendous amount of experience. And with a young team like this, talent on this roster, there's nobody I thought would be better for this job. Buck Showalter is getting these guys to play like a team for once. They're not just playing as, I'm going to hit for a bunch of home runs and try to get big contracts. Because the Mets have done that in the past. They've been a good power team. They've been a good on-base percentage team. But they've never been a good all-around baseball concept team. Finally, they actually have some legitimate team defense. They actually have some legitimate situational hitting. They're the best two-out hitting team right now in the National League and the second highest in the majors. Coming back in games that you would have never seen them come back in in years past, even with talented rosters. They had a big comeback a couple weeks ago against the Cardinals, and now this one against the Phillies, too. Down 7-1, to one, entering the ninth inning. You never would have seen that in the past on base percentage, batting average, and mixing up different lineups, too. This team is very deep, getting production from from other parts of the batting order. The only hitters that are really struggling so far are James McCann and Cano, who's now DFA'd. Good riddance. Everyone else is hitting in different spots of the lineup. It's finally looking like a real team again. That has a lot to do with Buck Showalter and the way he's managed, absolutely. If you look at Francisco Lindor, is he having a great batting average season? The answer would be no. He's batting 241, but he's hitting for power, and that's what the Mets need. He has 26 hits, 5 home runs, 17 RBIs, and 3 stolen bases, and he has a goal glove playing at the shortstop position. Pete Alonso right now is having a sensational year, and this is a young team. Their best players are the youngest players. Pete Alonso right now has five home runs, batting 269, 21 RBIs. When you look at Max Scherzer right now, who has been unbelievable, and I did not think Max Scherzer was going to be the guy that's going to change this franchise around. I was wrong. Max Scherzer right now is 4-0, 2.61 ERA, and his whip under one. With the pitching that they have, even their bullpen has been unbelievable. But Diaz, who I have always thought was going to be a very big acquisition when they made that trade to bring in him and Robinson Cano, which, by the way, is gone. Paid him $40 million just to get him out of there, which I think was a great move by the New York Mets. Where this team is for where they weren't last year, they didn't have unity in that clubhouse. That's why they brought in Baez to really help Francisco Lindor. Lindor wasn't playing well last year. They brought in one of his good friends. It didn't work out. Matter of fact, it caused trouble in the locker room. Then you bring in a guy like Sterling Marte, I think is one of the best defensive center fielders in baseball, fastest center fielders in baseball. If you were to ask me right now who has been the best all-around player for the New York Mets, it would be Sterling Marte. 262, 20 RBIs, three home runs, has four stolen bases, and he has not dropped the ball in the outfield. But it's not even their roster that's been so impressive. It really has been Max Scherzer and Chris Bassett. Those two guys who are so eager to get on that field and shut down and mow down teams. And you can't talk to these guys on the bench. When they're on the mound, it's business. When they're not on the mound, some people say they're the funniest guys in the locker room. But this team is showing you why they are going to have a chance to win in the National League and might have a chance for the first time in a very long time to be favorites of going to the World Series. 
There are two pitchers, I think, that have been storylines under the radar. Carlos Carrasco bouncing back very well this and year. And McGill. So Drew Smith, he's one of two relief pitchers that have not allowed an earned run yet this year, who they got in the Lucas Duda trade, has, along with Diaz, really carried that bullpen because Seth Lugo really has struggled. Adovino, former Yankee, has really struggled. And Trevor May, who's been hurt a lot so far this year, he hasn't been Are you surprised yet. Adam Adovino is not pitching well? I'm not. Boomer bust signing. He had a couple good years in the past, but he's he had a real... good year with the Red Sox last year. And he had one good year with the Rockies before the Yankees signed, and then he had one good year with the Yankees, then he fell off. It always happens like yeah. that with Adam out of yeah, He has he, one good yeah. year, one bad year. My expectations weren't that high regardless, but one next yankee that is pitching well, though, is Jason Shreve. Been their best lefty, one of the best lefties in the league. Yes, and he's a very good bullpen arm. You saw what the Yankees did with him. The Yankees really built him into a great bullpen arm, mm-hmm. and then they traded him. Bounced around throughout the league, and now he's back in New York, and good for him. Just like Castro with the Yankees yeah. when the Mets made the trade before the season started. I thought Castro was going to be a great fit in the Yankees' bullpen. He's been sensational for the Yankees. The Yankees have the best bullpen in baseball right now. You look at both teams, and you should be excited right now. The two best teams in the major leagues is not the Dodgers, the Red Sox, the Tampa Bay Rays, the Houston Astros, the St. Louis Cardinals. No, it's the two teams in New York, the New York Mets and the New York Yankees. As far as the Yankees are concerned, there's really nothing bad to say about this team right now. And yes, I'm going to say this, Yankee fans, for all the people to throw Aaron Boone under the bus, that he is a terrible manager, what are you going to say about him now? Everybody thought that this team wasn't going to cut it this year. As good as the lineup is of what the pitching staff was in the beginning of the season, everybody wanted to blame one guy, and that's the guy that they gave the three-year extension to, Aaron Boone. Not only Aaron Boone, everybody was trying to run out the great Brian Cashman, saying that the game has passed him by. The Yankees have already been on 11-game winning streak. This team has played flawless baseball. Two weeks ago, we were talking about hitting in men in scoring position. They were batting 176 with men in scoring position. The Yankees have put that number up in the last two weeks. And since that time we were talking, the Yankees are hitting over 300 in men in scoring position. Aaron Judge has nine home runs, batting 293 with 19 RBIs. Anthony Rizzo, nine home runs, 21 RBIs. Giancarlo Stanton has five home runs, batting 260, 16 RBIs. The Yankees have players right now that are almost in double digits in RBIs. They're the number one defensive team in baseball. They were the second worst defensive team in baseball last year. All the acquisitions Yankee fans were saying wasn't enough in the offseason have been nothing but great when you look at the numbers when they step on the field. One error in 11 games. What does that tell you about this team? They're playing fundamental baseball. That's something they haven't done since Joe Girardi. Even before Joe Girardi. Joe Girardi right now, which all the Yankee fans were jumping off the bridge when the Yankees fired him, gave the reins to Aaron Boone, which, by the way, has a better record in the first four years as a manager for the New York Yankees than Joe Girardi did. Joe Girardi right now in Philadelphia looks like he's going to be run out. The Phillies just really hire a robot to be their manager at this point. (laughs) Aaron Boone has done nothing but good things. For this team. And with an all new bullpen of guys breaking out, there are only two pitchers right now, Lucas Lecky and Jonathan Lewisica, that have ERAs over four on their staff. And really, those have been rigged by one bad outing. Everyone else, 3.75 ERA is the highest. Their starting rotation is all in the twos. You've got a couple of relief pitchers in the zeros Michael King, Clay Holmes, or Aldous Chapman. That says a lot about Aaron Boone, the way he's gotten guys finally in different roles. The Yankees were always the, we're talented, but we have only one type of identity type team. They were a great power team. They had a great bullpen. Big veteran arms fizzled out. Your team started to find the weaknesses of it. Now they have a little bit of everything and that's scary for this Yankees team and Aaron Boone definitely deserves credit for that. Isaiah kiner Falefa, a shortstop that the Yankees got in a package for Gary Sanchez. By the way, Gary Sanchez is not playing well with the Twins. And they're not playing that bad. Right now, Isaiah Kainafalefa is batting 295. He's not hitting for power. Nobody expects him to. He doesn't have any home runs. He's got 23 hits for the Yankees. He's been one of the best shortstops, all-around shortstops in baseball. Is anybody throwing Brian Cashman under the bus right now after making that move? Which, by the way, wasn't even the lead guy in that trade. He was an add-on player in that trade. Glaber Torres, who everybody said that this guy was a waste, trade him. Is he batting for average right now? No. Still's got three home runs and 12 RBIs as a second baseman. He's on his way to hit 20 to 25 home runs and about 90 RBIs. 
Is Joey Gallo great? No. And Joey Gallo has these spurts, and he doesn't hit for average. He'll go on one of those eight-game home run sprees where he's going to hit, like, ten home runs. If he doesn't hit for average but still is for power, what's the worst it could be? A Matt Stairs off the bench? Miguel Andohar gets called up. Yep. He's batting 400. They're not an average hitting team. And over the years, it's all about power. The Yankees have done nothing but hit for power. They're one of the only teams in baseball right now that have hit home runs. If you're a Yankee fan, and if you're a Met fan, you should be excited. For the first time in a very long time, really since 2000, when there was a Subway Series, there could be a good chance that we could see another Subway Series this year with the Yankees and the Mets.